So I showed you a few cases on those three categories of treatment that I suggested for you to follow, the conventional liner hybrid and the combination, which in that case was finishing aligners. These cases were intentionally selected, and I would recommend somebody who wants to get on ULAP would start with cases similar to that and then build up into a more complicated cases. Now I'm going to get a little bit deeper about the software and how you can actually use that to do your treatment. Um, the one thing that I like to recommend is to develop a systematic approach to digital treatment planning with you designs. And I will break this down and propose an idea for you. You can follow it, you can modify it a little bit if you like. So when it comes to digital treatment planning steps, I like to break it down into three different steps. The first step is to develop your final position of the teeth, and that's where the guide that's set up will help you to finalize where the teeth are going to go. Then the next step, you create your biomechanics. You can use the auto staging, you can use advanced staging, you really can get into the groove in this phase or in this steps and build in the exact same thing that you like. And I like to also mention that the step one, you can do it yourself, you can pass it to your digital system, you can train them and you can do it. The step two is the biomechanics and staging. I highly recommend for the orthodontist to learn how to do that. We automated some of these stage, but I still believe that the U design, uh, the power of U design is actually in this step. And then the third step after you finalize the biomechanics, then add your auxiliaries which is your attachment, and I'll explain to you how to do that. And that step could be also done by you or your team um, to basically manage it. So um, let's go through a case and kind of break it down. So when you try to create a setup, you decide, you know, you pick up your case and you have distalization, deep bite correction, and crowding. What you can do, you can break these, you know, basically treatment objective that you have into a few different sprint. So when you start, maybe target the distalization, if you decided to use a liner as opposed to hybrid appliances, and then start working on the deep bite. Don't try to tackle everything all at the same time because the likelihood of your, your liners are not tracking is gonna be more. Here is an example of how you can build in a treatment planning. So um, this is the setup stage. And I can show you that in about four minutes and 30 seconds, you can create a setup. Um, let's say in the beginning, you're trying to figure that out. That might take a little bit longer, but overall, it shouldn't take too long. So this is a case that I showed you, unilaterals, class two on the left side, um, crowding deep bite. Um, when you see I use the guided setup, which is something that I highly recommend for you to start using it. And, and the idea of a guided setup is that we provide you with a lot of tools to quickly create these treatment. So these tools that I'm showing you right now, they're an arch basically template that you can put on your arch and then apply it. So what I did in the, here on the top, I basically defined my arch shape. Then I corrected my AP. You can see on the top right corner, I'm using this viewer to try to basically adjust um, the AP as well as the transverse because since you're moving the teeth back you want to adjust that and you can see how you can use these tools to very you know quickly do all these changes and then that fine minor fine tuning you can use the table you can use the widget and adjust all those things and you can see all of these details with like a heavy detailing it doesn't take a lot of time and then you can use that AP button in here to get your top teeth to match. And, and, you know, we recommend for you to identify the arch that you would like to work first as your quote unquote reference arch. And then after you build your reference arch, which in this case, I started doing it with the top, then you can adjust the bottom one with all these tools that we have, this arch coordination tool that you have. And then you can use the space management to distribute your spaces, right? Very easy very simple you can build a good treatment plan and get all of them done so you start with the arch form top and the bottom alignment then you get to your vertical when it comes to the vertical you can have a, use any of these tools that you have 
and you can see how I basically leveled the arches and I need a minor adjustment on the canine. I can do those very quickly. We're still about two minutes to try to finish this case with you know good degree of detailing. These are not just like an average setup. This is a setup that you know I spend pretty good amount to really detail it to the final position, right? Um, one of the things that generally comes up is about overcorrection. Um, I don't really do a lot of overcorrection. My overcorrection is generally in nothing more than five to ten percent. I believe on this sprint concept where you would build in some degree of your treatment and because of that I don't really need to do a lot of overcorrections because I know that I will tackle that problem again and try to correct it. And there's a lot of less guessing game of you know what percentage do I need to do overcorrection. You you could you never know that because the biology is very different in the patient. So you could guess and do certain amount of overcorrection, but it's always a guessing game. And I believe that it would be easier if you don't do that. So five to ten percent maximum overcorrections. And if you look at my setup, I generally just build it where I want it to go. And when you get to the end, when you get to the detailing, you can really detail the case with you know a few sprints at the end of the treatment. Um, you can see the space management. So in about four minutes, you're in a great shape. Now you can do very, very detailing if you even want to do a little bit more um, on the vertical. Um, check all the spaces. And, and you can see in here when I started the case, I left a little bit of a space because that was kind of like, okay, I'm going to leave this as it is. I will build my lower arch. Then I'll bring my top teeth back and see you know, how much overhead do I have? How much IPR do I need to do? Four minutes, 33 seconds. Very easy to do it. Then the next step after you do the setup, then, you know, here, here's an example of based on my setup, you can decide, do I want to do um, a hybrid approach where I use emotion appliances or do I want to do elastic sequential distillation? You know, going through that setup, you can actually get a good sense of how many aligners do you need to do it, and you can make a decision. I can tell you, majority of my cases are, are hybrid. I, I, I love motion appliances. It's a simple appliance. It's a little pricey, but it gives me, it's the best thing in my practice because it just, um, the patient love it. The, the first appointment is very simple. So my default for AP correction, 90% of the time is going to be a motion. So when you're done, then we'll talk about, you know, biomechanics. When it comes to the biomechanics, the first thing that I that I always ask, um, try to kind of distill in people's mind is that when you're looking at your stages, before even you're looking at the software, think about how long does it take to finish this case, independent of the appliance that you have. If you're thinking that this is a case that's going to take 18 months, don't accept a setup that has 20 aligners or 30 aligners when you know that you know you need a good amount of work to try to get things done so the way that I look at it I would go with a sprint and let's say that I would go with a six months of a sprint at the end of that six months I want to be in a specific place and I want to solve some of my treatment objectives so all this staging that I do is around that kind of movement, right? Identify that the most challenging teeth, make sure that the movement around those are very clear. Make sure that you identify the teeth that are um, independent movements, right? They're basically um, interdependent movement. What it means is that if you're moving, let's say, a premolars um, distally or mesially, you need to create a space for those. So, those movement is not going to happen if you don't create those spaces. And you've got to think about the size of the root. You've got to think about the how much movement you need to make sure that the second two actually move to that position that you have. So interdependent movement needs to be flagged. You want to also establish segmental anchorage. What it means is that don't try to move the arch all at the same time unless you know that the movement are synergistic and you can kind of follow it. But even with synergistic movement, I found it if you leave a few teeth, you know, between the two part, the front and the back, as your quote unquote anchorage, generally you get better traction. And then obviously, always, always evaluate the inner proximal spaces. And this is a huge topic that, you know, at some point we can talk about. I'm not going to get into the details of that. 
So here is the biomechanics. I'm going to show you two approaches that you can use. One is the auto staging, which is basically um, in this case that I did the setup. Now you can click on auto staging and it will create all the stages. The auto stages is really good for managing potential collision during the course of the treatment, um, but it doesn't build a lot of complicated biomechanics. You can definitely use that for collision cases like this. Basically what it does, it expand the posterior first, line the teeth up, bring everything back in here. Um, the alternative to auto staging would be advanced sequencing, right? So if you look at in here, the auto staging is actually creating on mass retraction. You can see it in here. But if you don't like to do on mass retraction, then you can use the advanced sequencing and create that. And I'm going to show you how to do it in here. So when you click on advanced sequencing, you identify the teeth that you want to start moving first. So for example, in here, I want to use the left, the right side of my aligners to continue expanding and start sequential distalization. Don't do only sequential distalization. Try to identify other stuff in the arch that you can use to be smart about it. And you can see that I select every tooth, move the bar, click on the plus sign, and then keep going. Um, and that's kind of how you develop your sequential distalization or sequential movement, whatever it's distalization, expansion, um, intrusion, whatever that you want, this is, this is the way that you do it. And then after you created all these movement, you could still come on any of these 5, 10, 14, 18 keyframe that I created. And at that point, you can move the teeth and create more transitional position for your teeth to move. And if you want to create, you know, again, transitional movement, you can actually go, let's say in here, I try to continue doing even more advanced sequencing. And I click on plus, and you can see every time when you click on plus, the total number of the aligners increases, right? So going back to what I discussed, if you think that this stylization in this case, plus the other stuff is going to take 9 to 12 months, then your aligners has to match that number, right? So don't go with a 24 aligner, 30 aligners, hoping that you're going to get all those things. If you, if you see, um, you know, if you see that you have 20 something, make sure at least your mechanics is actually pretty solid. The next step would be to add auxiliaries, and auxiliaries are basically attachments, um, elastic slit and button, uh, pressure area, pressure point, and then for the attachment, we have two approaches. You have the protocol attachment, open by deep by distalization. You could also create your own attachment, which is a huge advantage of you that. You could also use single attachment that we have. We have a generic and enhanced, and in the new version that is coming in very, very soon, we actually improved the automatic placement of these attachments. So we revisited the whole single attachment protocol, um, but you could use them. Um, you could create your own version of how you want to do things. Again, sky is the limit when it comes to your lab. You can, you can create your own system very easily. Um, if you're not comfortable creating your own stuff, we have the system built in here for you. You can use them. You can modify them. You can save it as your own protocols. So here's an example of showing you how the attachment works. So this is a case that, you know, we talk about it. And now, um, because in the lower arch is a deep bite, so you just click on deep bite, you get all the attachment there. You go in there, you can modify it, you can make it bigger, you can move it on the surface of the teeth, you can create whatever you want to do, and then just go from there. Um, and for the distalization, you have the distalization protocol. When you click on distalization, you can identify if you want it in bilateral or you want it only on one side. A fairly easy way to do this. Um, and you adjust it and you are kind of keep going, right? And here's the distalization you can see, right? So this is the, this is the protocol and I go there. I was like, okay, I want it to be a little bit this way. I want to modify it. You adjust it. You've got to be careful to not bring them too close to gingiva. You get a warning on the software. Um, it's going to make it hard for the trimming machine to trim that. Um, so you want to be careful about the size of the attachment, the position of the attachment. We do have some recommendation on the software. So if you follow those recommendations, generally you won't have any problem with any of these attachments.